There is nobody better to relive the past five years of chaos in British politics than the humble crofter himself, Ian Blackford. And we are absolutely delighted that he has chosen JK Live for, check this, his very first interview since formally stepping down as the SNP leader in Westminster. Ian Blackford, how are you? Jeremy, pleasure to be on with you. Did I really say humble crofter once? No, I think <laughs> Boris Johnson did. The thing about you is the crew said it. You look so demob happy, I man. I am. I'm delighted. I'm going to get my life back. Let's start, because you've always been straight with me and I appreciate you being here. Um, it is your first TV interview since stepping down. Why here? Why now? Well, one, because of the respect I have for you. I always have good discussions with you. Um, and I know that you'll ask the right questions. And, uh, you know, it's a just a real pleasure and privilege to be on with you. Thanks, mate. I know picking us over the pub is a real, a real plus for that us. That was last um, night. Why did you step down? Well, look, at the end of the day, I've been Westminster leader for five and a half years. You've talked about four prime ministers have been office and saying, in current politics, to be in that position for such a length of time. I've enjoyed it. I mean, maybe if I do write a book or call it, I have had a ball, because I have had a ball. Um, you know, to lead my party at Westminster, to work with the Scottish Government, the First Minister, I've, I've really enjoyed doing. But it takes its toll. I live right at the north end of the Isle of Skye. I have a horrendous commute. Frequently have to leave at the weekend. I get back often as we go into the weekend. I'm, I'm not complaining about that. That's how it's been. But now I've got the opportunity to change tack, change direction. I'm going to be the First Minister's business ambassador in Scotland, still represent my constituents, but have a better work-life balance. And, you know, I took the view that it was time to to move on, to, to stand down. And I think that's the question, because you've always been straight with me. Mike, tweet straight away. Mm. Did you give up the jobs, or did they come and get you and you were pushed? Because much has been written over the last seven days. Yeah, look, politics is a dirty business, isn't it? We all know that. You're never going to please all the people all of the time. You know, some people have a different way of wanting to do things, and I think it's fair to say that some people probably wanted to see the the end of my backside off the off the front bench, that's fine, they're entitled to that. I could have seen this off. Could you? I, I, would, I believe I would have won if I'd put myself forward. Under our system, I have to stand for leader every year at the annual meeting. I've actually gone through six annual meetings and, and be re-elected. And, you know, I discussed things with the, the First Minister and I said, look, give me a job because we need to convince people in the business community that, that we have a plan for an independent Scotland. I'm really relished in doing that. I've started, by the way, I've had two meetings today. Actually, you know, being unleashed, I can do the things that I've maybe not always been able to do. I met Alec McLeish this afternoon, who's a hero from mine having been... Well, he was a hero of mine, so he managed Birmingham City. Um, Nicola <laughs> Sturgeon, how did she react to the news of you stepping down? Because there are reports circulating that she, however... Uh, she has reacted or said publicly was, was pretty devastated and was a major supporter of yours. No, look, at the end of the day, she's a dear friend and colleague. Uh, we, we talked it over. Uh, I said I took the view that, that I was wanted to go. She's been fully supportive of that, but she said, you know, some really kind and generous things. And I said, look, if I can have this position, helping you, reporting to you, making sure that we're building the case. You and I talked a few weeks ago about the energy report I've commissioned. I'm just yep. commissioning one now on a green industrial strategy. I want to engage with people. You know, have proper conversations about what the future of our country is. You give the impression that, 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 that being free of that role in Parliament gives you more ability to do things. Are you saying that actually question. being the leader of the SNP quashed what you were able to do? Um, to some extent, yes, because so much is around what you do in Prime Minister's questions, and I've loved it. Let's be clear, I've loved it. Except loved when you got thrown out for being naughty. Yeah, we'll come time. to that, I'm no, no yeah. doubt. But, no, yes, I am now free to go and have discussions with business people. I met with Alexander Dennis, the bus manufacturer, this morning. I met with Oil & Gas UK uh, this afternoon as well. And, and are I'm you really... more loose-lipped? Are you able to say a bit more of what you think? I think I've always said what I think. I think people know me as being fairly open. I don't... Right, loose with... lips. We've had a tweet already. You mentioned the shark snapping at your feet. You mentioned politics is a dirty game. We know that to be true. On the 17th of November, yeah. Stephen Flynn MP tweeted that he had absolutely no intention of standing as leader and yesterday he was crowned as your successor. He's only just become the leader and mm. already one could throw at him that he's lied to the British public. What do you think of that? Well, look, at the end of the day, everyone's responsible for their actions, Jeremy. What I will say, I mean, I will be honest and open with people, but also I'll be loyal as well. I'll support whoever takes over. Stephen's taken over. He has my best wishes, as does Mary Black, his, his deputy. Um, look, at the end of the day, I've moved on. There's an opportunity there. Stephen's taken that. He has all my best wishes. I, God, I could talk to you forever. I wish I could go to the pub with you because I get far more. But on, on Come a on, serious we'll go note, to the pub after this. Yeah, well, I wish. Yeah, <laughs> now I've got to go home. All the children, uh, more kids than Boris Johnson. Um, in terms of 
the SNP How movement. How many kids have you got? Why are we having this How discussion? Many kids have you got? Five. How many have you got? Six. Have you? Yeah. No wonder you, <laughs> no wonder you became an MP and stayed down here that often. God, are you going to go home? You'll be over the hill, man. Listen, on a serious note, um, casual voters. Um, we know about India Ref 2. We know what the Supreme yeah. Court said. I presume the Scottish National Party won't give up their desire for independence. But with what is perceived to be instability and gossip and you saying, you know, it's a dirty game and much has been written about Stephen Flynn, he orchestrated this and whatever, do you think that voters will be put off their desire by, for independence by what's been going on? No, look, at the end of the day, in a democracy, in a party like the SNP, people have got the right to put themselves forward. I have no issue with that. I will say, though, that parties that are not united don't win. So it's very important that we come together. You know, we've got a mandate from the people of Scotland to deliver an independence referendum. But what's more important as that, or as important as that, is about having that debate about what type of country. And that's what I want to do over the course of the next while, support the First Minister in, in doing that. Greg's tweeted, Given the Northern Ireland border has been the biggest Brexit issue and still remains unresolved, what exactly would the SNP plan to do about the border with England? I want to have a, a good trading relationship across these islands. It is a border issue that we have to confront. You know, often when we talk about these things, though, so let me give you the example of Ireland. Way back in the 1940s, 90-odd percent of Ireland's trade was with the rest of the UK. It's now 9% and falling. And actually, in every year since then, Ireland's trade with the UK has increased. There's an opportunity for us in Europe. I want to grow the economy. I want to be the best of friends with the people right across these islands to have a good trading relationship with the rest of the UK. I, I will say to you, I hope that there's a resolution to the issues in, in the north of Ireland over the protocol. I actually believe there will be. And, and that, I think, will create the kind of opportunities, the roadmap of what we can do. We should look forward to optimism about what we can do. And I've talked about the energy report. We can increase Scotland's green energy fivefold. Is the independence debate over after the Supreme Court? No. You say you've got a mandate from the people. Explain to me, I'm not an nth as intelligent as you, but how many well, referendums do you need before you accept the, but, the inevitable, which is the, the people said no? At the end of the day, people have got the right to change their mind. We had the referendum in 2014. Let's be clear, I respect the decision that was taken by the people then. But, of course, we were told we were to lead the UK. We were told that we'd been staying in the European Union. People in Scotland want to be in the European so Union. So the rules have changed, which is why you're saying... Correct. You and, we, and we faced the electorate last year in Scotland and said, if you vote for the SNP, it's on that promise of delivering a referendum. We won the election. There's an independence majority in Parliament. It's about fairness. Here's a question that right. somebody said to me the other day to ask you. Does... does... Can Scotland afford to go alone? Can Scotland afford not to go alone? Look at the shambles that we've had. You know, come back to what I'm saying about energy. Yeah. This opportunity, we can increase our output fivefold. We can create 235,000 jobs and investment into the Scottish economy of 43 billion. Jeremy, what I'm going to do now is to do a green industrial plan about how we drive investment into the Scottish economy. It's not where the Scottish economy is today. It's where it can be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time. Now, here's the thing. If you look at every decade since the 1850s, Scotland's relative population in the UK has declined. So something has happened. Your ancestry is Scottish. People yeah, have left my for economic the opportunity. Scottish University, well, there yeah. we are. I want to create the opportunities that people can come and live in Scotland. New Scots, people that want to be part of our story. I want a successful country, but we have to change to be able to do that. Let's be honest about the challenges. We're not talking about milk and honey tomorrow, but we're talking about the difference that we can make for our children and our children's children. I, I, always, think, I always think with the SNP, it's one of those polarising debates about Scottish independence. But I think you, you, you're quite held in quite high esteem by people in Britain, actually, because you've always... You've got the sort of cheeky, chappy persona and there's something about you which is which is approachable. Now, you've been in the Commons for a while. I don't know, it's 2015, isn't it? Yeah. Um, for you, there seems to have been a scandal every few days. Bad behaviour. Loads of Tory MPs apparently going to resign, um, including mm. Matt Hancock today, who announced it on TikTok Hancock, as I call it. Um, are you going to stand down? No. Why not? You can listen, listen, listen. Yeah. You can see the wife and the five kids. You could go in the jungle, write a book. You can make your own tartan <laughs> waistcoats. Well, not, There's loads yeah, of things you could do, man. Tartan waistcoat, I quite like that idea. Yeah. Have um, you got your own tartan? Of course I do. I, I come from the, the Morrisons and the Campbell, and I wear both those kilts and the Isle of Skye one, which are... Are you a true a Scotsman? As, um, oi, oi. as a woman once said to a man, is there anything worn under the kilt? And I can assure you it's all in perfect working order. Good man, I'm loving this. Um... Let's just look at some of your best bits. We've got a little montage here for right. you because um, there was a famous time when you were thrown out and I spoke to you on the side of the green because you weren't allowed to stand on House of Commons yeah. property. Take a look at this, Ian Blackford's best bits. The reality of the situation is that powers that are enshrined under the Scotland Act in 1998 are being grabbed back by this. And the MP 
MPs from Scotland were not given the courtesy of even debating it last night. It is a democratic outrage. The people of Scotland will not be disrespected by this Parliament. Mr Blackbird, order! 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 Resume your seat, Mr Blackbird. I order the right honourable gentleman to withdraw immediately from the House for order for the remainder of this day's sitting. I am standing up for my constituents, but know that this Prime Minister has lied and misled the House. But no. Should, or, order. To help me, to help the House, you withdraw on your early comment and replace it with inadvertently. It's not my fault if the Prime Minister can't be trusted to tell the truth. Under the power given to me by Standing Order No. 43, I order the Honourable Member to withdraw immediately from the House. Naughty in Blackford. Standing up for the rights of my constituents in my country and pointing out the Prime Minister was a liar. Um, of the four Prime Ministers that you faced, uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to the, the answer to this question. Who was your favourite to deal with? Who's my favourite to deal with? The one that was courteous was Theresa May. The one that I suppose I have to say I enjoyed the battle with, exposing his behaviour, of course, was Boris Johnson. He, re he was... referred to you jovially as the humble crofter. Yeah, well, he had these jibes, didn't he? He also said that he and I were friends. Let me say categorically, absolutely not Never true. been for a drink with him? No, never. Not Don't once. want to? Um, no, look, at the end of the day, I've been in number 10 when he was Prime Minister once yeah. in all that time. And, uh, you know, he said to me a few weeks ago, it took me three years to think how to respond to you, uh, but then we got under your skin. And that was because, of course, he said to, said to the nations... Do you think that, he's a uh, loss to British politics? No, because I think he's poisoned politics. I think the, the atmosphere, the climate, our political discourse have really suffered. Uh, I, I mean, he's a chancer and a charlatan, and... Quite frankly, I'm, I'm glad he's gone, but he's done a lot of damage in the time that he's been here. We asked people to, to send in questions, and my good friend Mike Graham recorded this this ah, morning. Mike. This, is, this yeah. is absolutely for you, Ian Blackford. Take a look. Here's my question to Ian Blackford, MP. Ian, why have you blocked me on Twitter? I don't remember saying anything to you that was particularly unusually rude, and I don't believe that MPs and politicians who are in the public pay, paid by taxpayers, should be able to block... Certainly not journalists and presenters on television, just because you didn't like something that I said. So, please unblock me so we can have a full and frank conversation. And I promise not to be rude. Well, if he's, if he's watching tonight, Mike, I'll unblock you. I'll happily unblock he's you. He's the man he's you a, need to a, go to the pub with. He's, um, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, a, he's a lovable But he did say something that was, you know, I think was kind of pushing things a bit. But, look, at the end of the day, I think all of us in public life have got a responsibility. We've talked about discourse. Yeah. Mike is Mike is who Mike he is. is Mike. I've known him. I've known him a long time. Yeah. And unblock uh, if he, him. If, I'll unblock him if he feels offended. Then, uh, and he's then not I, offended. Then he just uh, like, yeah. like like me. I, I suspect that my politics wouldn't be your politics and vice versa. But I can absolutely appreciate you as a human being, and you've been straight with me, and I've been straight with you, and that's what's fantastic. What I meant when I said about Johnson, and I'll say the same to you. Yeah. I, I saw that replacement of yours today. He looks exciting, doesn't he? Politics. No, no. I'm being straight. Yeah, politics yeah. in in the House of Commons will be will be duller without you because you are a character and you've always engaged with the press and you've always been honest. And of course. whether you get your dream of Scottish independence or not, it's, it's a joy to actually talk to and interview people like you. Tell me this, two final questions. Yeah. Will you miss the spotlight, seriously? Look, I have enjoyed that opportunity to be, be at PMQs. I mean, there'll still be opportunities to participate in the debate. I love the, the rough and tumble of it. You know, one of the things, you know, when the Tory MPs are shouting at me, I actually don't hear very well. What? So it oh, never actually, it's it never actually really bothered me. <laughs> and actually, it's funny, a few weeks ago, I'll say this to you, because I think Rishi Sunak put the word out that they were to quieten down. And I'm halfway through my question, and I'm aware of the silence. I think, what on earth is going on? It was almost more off-putting than, than being shouted at. So Tory MPs carry on shouting at me. That's not a problem. Next election, uh, for years it was said the only way Labour would get in was with the SNP. The way the polls speak at the moment, the SNP will do well, Labour will get a majority and the, 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 the Conservative Party will almost face extinction. What do you make of Rishi Sunak? Well, what I'll say to... Well, Rishi Sunak, if you're looking at Keir Starmer, is both of them have got to respect democracy. You talk about the polls, there's a poll today saying that the support for independence is up to 56%, showing that the SNP would take all but two seats in a Westminster election, whether it's Rishi Sunak, whether it's Keir Starmer, they've got to respect democracy. Ever the consummate professional. Oh, hold on a second, I've got a text. Oh, right, this is from um, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> 500 grand? 
500 grand. Nah, look, at the end of the day, Matt Hancock did it. Grand. Matt Hancock did it. I don't think I'm a celebrity to get you that right You were tempting Blackford. Quite, it's quite my thing. Half we do other things in television. Would you I'm write a sure. book? Imagine going in the jungle in a pair of tartan budgie smugglers. You'd be a hit. <laughs> Listen, I mean it, mate. A real pleasure, and we'll definitely have that drink. A right, pleasure perfect. to meet you. Ian Blackford, fantastic. Thank you very much indeed.